like to respond to a person that some of you may know, um, a YouTuber called uh, David Carroll. David Carroll has been around for a pretty long time now. I know back in the day, I used to try to uh, speak with David Carroll. He's a soul brother, unfortunately. <laughs> and, uh, very, you know, like most soul people, their soul is lost. They are gone. He wears these shades, smokes this cigar. I guess he's uh, the black revolutionary version of Bill Cosby or something. I, I don't know. But he has thousands of subscribers. And I guarantee you, the majority of, of his subscribers are Caucasian people. And the reason why the Caucasian or pink people like him is because they use him as a way to say, look, see, look, at this Negro is saying the same stuff that we're talking about. You know how that goes. And they support him because, because he is a soul brother. He can say things that Caucasian people would say, that's, you know, we would probably call Caucasian people racist and all that type of stuff. But it's coming out of the mouth of a Negro and he can get away with it because he's a Negro too. You see, he, he agrees with the stuff that we say. <laughs> oh, mighty, mighty, mighty slick, I guess. You know, but uh, he makes excuses for the races. And I really don't really, I really don't know a lot about this guy. I know he don't like Dr. Martin Luther King. He, he really does not like Dr. King. And that's very rare that somebody like that would not like Dr. King. And then you have all these Caucasian subscribers that he has. Well, you know, the reality is they didn't like Dr. King either. But after the man is dead, they want to take that non-violent part of him and the bits and pieces that fit their agenda. They don't talk about Dr. King once said that he made a mistake trying to integrate. It's, it was like uh, leading his people into a burning house. Or when he spoke against the Viet Vietnam War. They don't talk about that Dr. King. The Dr. King that made it very clear. Who is your enemy? Dr. King made it very clear. My enemy is the white man. He made it clear. He had hopes that we can work this thing out, but that's who his enemy was, Dr. King. You try to speak with David Carroll, and David Carroll basically avoids everybody. He don't need to, to debate nobody. He got all these Caucasian people on his side. And he's perfectly happy with the white folks. <laughs> so, Go ahead, David Carroll. You, you got it going on. He says that everybody, he's too smart for people like me and, and all these other folks that's out here that want to challenge his, his words. I don't deal with you guys. You're not, on my, you're not on my level. No, David Carroll, I'm not on your level. I'm not a guard dog and an excuse maker for races. No, I'm not on your level. You're absolutely correct, sir. No, I'm not a bootlicker for races. No, I'm not on your level, sir. You're absolutely correct. What brings me to this video is that there's another uh, YouTuber that uses the uh, avatar of a gorilla, calls himself the Mad Head Doctor. And I was looking for the video because I wanted to actually take the words coming from up out of David Carroll's mouth so I could respond to it from up from the Mad Head Doctor's video. And the Mad Head Doctor is in agreement and concur with whatever, with this statement that David Carroll is talking about. It's, it's, it's really amazing. You have two extreme and wacky points of view. You have the pro-black movement, way, way over there, no balance. Then you have people like the Mad Head Doctor and David Carroll. They way out there too. There is no balance. And when you have no balance, 
something is falling off its pedestal. Something is awry. Something is wrong. There is no balance. You must have balance in life. You must have balance. And they don't. You either too much of this or too much of that. Anyway, David Carroll and the Mad Hair Doctor, I guess they are in agreement with the with the uh, thing that soul brothers and sisters, we should not buck the system. We should respect authority. That's not the problem. Let me explain. David Carroll says this. These Negroes that buck the system, they should be shaming themselves. They, they, they don't, they stupid for doing that. He gives this analogy or an example for his, uh, for his statement. He says, when I was growing up, I lived in my daddy's house. He was the authority. True, David Carroll, that is true. And my daddy made it very clear. If you don't like what's going on here, you want to buck the system, then you can get out of my house. And then, of course, the mad, the mad head doctor has a problem with separation. So we don't know what to do because David Carroll said, get out of the house. That's separation. You separate from your parents. The mad head doctor said, use the law, vote, do whatever you have to do because this is your nation just as much as anybody else and we should try to use the system. So see, there's confusion here and y'all just can't get it together. You're too much of this and you're too much of that. <laughs> Let us bring a little balance here. And see, the thing about it is we don't accept our reality and we functioning based upon a rigid thinking pattern and we're not flexible in our thought. Look here. I want to say this to, to uh, David Carroll and all those who think like David Carroll and I want to say this to the mad head doctor because I clearly you must concur with black folks should not buck authority. We should respect this authority, all this protested and look at here. Look, look, look at him. First of all, these Caucasian people, these races who are in power, ain't my damn daddy. This is not their house. No matter what you say or how you look at it, this is not their house. They do not own the United States, according to them. There are all kinds of United States citizens. There are Caucasians, there are Chinese, there are Africans, there are Middle Eastern. Whoever is a citizen of this nation, there is no daddy. So since I am a citizen of this nation, and Dr. King, of whom David Carroll do not like, Dr. King made it very clear, I have no problem with authority. I have no problem with the law. However, like Dr. King said, when law is unjust, when law is unfair, when authority is exploited, when authority is intrusive upon the rights of the citizens, then I must buck the system. I, then I must fight against that system. I must fight against that authority. We must buck the system. And of course, uh, David Carroll don't like Dr. King anyway. And you won't, you don't care nothing about what Dr. King says. You don't give a damn about what I say. It has to come from up out of the mouth or the actions of those of whom you've fallen in love with, the races. So let, so let me present an action that your races took, the ones who are in authority. Now, Going back to the Revolutionary War, they did not like Patrick Henry, George Washington, Ben Franklin, all the forefathers. They did not like the authority of the British government. And they buck the system, beginning, of course, with the Boston Tea Party and later on with that scuffle 
were the first person that died in the Revolutionary War was Crispus Attucks and so forth. They bucked the system. They bucked authority. So you're going to tell me and you're going to tell brothers and sisters of soul in this nation, we look silly and we're stupid for not respecting authority. However, the people that you support who are now the authority, their forefathers bucked authority because authority was unjust, it was uh, exploited, and it was intrusive upon their rights. In fact, it even got to the point they went to war. They went to war for years and years. Now, so what are you going to tell the forefathers of this nation, mad head doctor? What are you going to tell the forefathers of this nation, David Carroll, who bucked the system? Because the system is not right. I am a citizen. These people ain't my damn daddy. I am a citizen just like they are. So, brothers and sisters, since the beginning of this nation have died in every war, we pay our share in taxes, and anything these suckers that's supposed to be in authority, matter of fact, why are they in authority when the country is diverse? Why are these racist-minded people who are not just exploited, a bunch of lies and deceivers, a bunch of warmongers, why are they in power anyway? Why isn't authority diverse? Why aren't the so-called Negro represented in that authority? The Chinese represented in that authority. The Africans and all these who have become citizens in this nation, in its diversity, in this multicultural environment, why aren't we represented in that authority? It's in the hands of a group of suckers that y'all make excuses for. Don't buck them. And why don't you want to buck them? You don't want to buck them because they will kill you. They will murder you. That's the reason why. So it's better, since you can't beat them, join them. But that was not the mentality of the forefathers of this nation. They did not want or wish to join Britain. You need to get leave us the hell alone. And they went to war. And really, that's what the so-called Negro or the soul brothers and sisters of this nation, you really need to make up your mind. You need to go to war and get this over with once and for all and show these suckers you are just like the forefathers of this nation. You ain't having it. And put up your flag that says, don't tread on me. I would rather have my ass kicked. I would rather be dead than continue to live like David Carroll and the mad head doctor begging. Begging and scraping and groveling and, 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 and looking so pathetic. And with your cigar in your mouth. You ain't nothing but a, a slave. Trying to be cool, a cool, a cool slave. I want to talk to soul sisters. I want to talk to women in general. And I hope that the soul brothers, I hope that males with a good, sincere heart, I hope that you understand where I'm coming from when I bring this to us. All right. Y'all ready to get, y'all ready to get on the soul train? I am Angel Snub Nub 7. And of course, this is the Realities Temple on Earth. I am your soul brother number one. Well, I was driving, just driving, and as I was driving, I saw a mother cat, and she had kittens following behind her. So, I slowed down because I didn't want to make a mistake and hit the poor cat, 
and uh, slowed down and the mother cat proceeded to go across the street. But you know, like always sometimes, we have stragglers. So all the kittens was on the other side of the road except this one kitten. And this one kitten just so happened sat in the middle of the road. So the mother cat noticed that she had a straggler. She noticed that one of her babies was missing. So she turned around very quickly and tried to go grab the kitten because she saw a car was coming. I was in the car. She saw the car was coming. And, and I slowed down. I did not stop. I slowed down. Now, while all this is going on, I did not stop. I just slowed down. She noticed I did not slow down. And she tried to grab her baby, but the baby kept slipping out of her mouth. Dogs and cats, I believe they had that little skin where the, where the mother dog or the mother cat can grab them by the skin and, and pick them up. She was having problems grabbing the, the kitten. So, like I said, I did not stop. I was slowly coming forth. I wasn't going to hit the cat now. But she saw, the mother cat saw, that I was slowly moving forward. And as far as she was concerned, this was a very dangerous situation. Now, her first instinct was to stand up against this car and try to protect her baby. And like I said, I steady, the, the car steady moving forward. And I saw the fear in her eyes, but at, at the same time I saw that she wanted to protect her baby. She had to make a quick decision. So what she done, I guess in her mind, it makes no sense for, for both of us to die. So she went to the other side of the street. And I guess she just, and she just sat there looking all sad. She knew her baby was going to die. I'm like, wow. But of course, I stopped. And she saw, the mother cat saw that I stopped. She went out into the middle of the street, grabbed her baby, and they went on about their merry way. Why am I using this as an example? I'm using this as an example because this was a single mother with kittens. In most cases, when we're dealing with mammals, and the human being is a mammal, there is no male that helped raise the, the babies. The mother cat was all by herself. The mother elephant has males in her pod or whatever, in her group. Males don't help raise the babies. Lions don't help raise the cubs. That's just how it goes. But we are taught that you need a man in the house. Otherwise, your children won't turn out right. I guarantee you, this single mother cat will raise all her babies just fine. However, here you are, a human being, mother, and you too damn stupid to raise your children by yourself. You just got to have this man. Now, if the man is around, that's fine and dandy. If he if he if he's not around, that's cool too. You, woman, you are perfectly capable of raising your children. The problem is, you raise and nurture your children in an environment that these men created that makes your babies, under their influence, makes your baby crazy. Has nothing to do with you. Matter of fact, living around these corrupt, silly, childish men have made you crazy, made you insane. Now look, The mother cat attempted to save and protect her babies. You as a mother, black women, soul sisters, women in general, many of you are failing to protect your babies because you're waiting on some man. That's not how it goes. Because if the man is not going to do it, it's up to you. And many of you are failing your children. You are allowing pedophiles to get a hold of your children, which some of these pedophiles are your relatives. Some of these pedophiles is your husband and your brother and your uncles and your grandfathers. 
you're not protecting your babies from these twisted, sick, demented folks. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in the Nation of Islam, as far as I remember, taught the sisters, you don't leave your children with your husband. There's a reason for that. The reason for that is, I'm sorry, I know I'm part of the male gender too, but the but the problem is, men are, 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 are nuts. Men are insane. And you are, you are naive to believe this cat is really going to do what he needs to do. You think he's supposed to protect you. That's a farce. Women, y'all represent life. You represent life. The male does not represent life. He does not have that connection. That's why it's easy for him to destroy. That's why it's easy for men to kill and be violent. They don't have that connection to life. Women, y'all have what you call a maternal instinct. So in nature, you will see a dog and a cat. They say natural enemies. But you have, you have seen many times where a dog will suckle a puppy or a cat will suckle you know or a dog will suck a kitten did I get that mixed up yeah but uh you will see a lion I saw a lion a lioness suckle an antelope lions eat antelope but that maternal instinct is so strong some of y'all black power family y'all so blackity black power but because of that internal instinct, that maternal instinct, because of that connection to life, if you saw a Caucasian pink baby just laying around crying or whatever, it would be very, very difficult for you to let that baby cry, even though you so blackity black, black power. Because you have a maternal instinct. Men, on the other hand, don't have that. That's why it's easy for them to destroy. That's why it's easy for them to be violent. Always talking about, we will we'll blow the earth up ten times. All types of crazy, wacky stuff. God. You keep listening to these men and you talk about the God. But God that they give you don't care nothing about you. Here you are, 144 books. Isn't it 144 books? No, it's more than 144. Damn, how many, how many books is it in the Bible? I'm sorry. As time goes on, I keep, keep forgetting these, these, these valuable uh, bits of information. But you have all these books. I'm going to have to look that up. But uh, you have all this scripture. And this God does not find worthy of not one woman. You have women prophets or whatever, but the major players in the Bible and the Quran is always a man. Why is that? Here you are, the life giver. Here you are, without you, there will be no Jesus. Listen. Without you, there will be no Muhammad. Without you, there would be no Abraham or Isaac or none of this stuff. You're the life giver in your womb. Life develops for nine months. And then you bring forth that life. Just the same way as the universe, as this planet brings life. I don't know about the universe. I don't know nothing about life outside of this planet. I can't say, I can't speak about the earth. Out of this planet brings life and you are a reflection of this planet if not the universe itself you are a life giver in slavery our ancestors our soul sisters in slavery they talk to their babies and try to give them lessons so they could survive that condition it perhaps was not the best because we should have we should have fought at some point but see mama 
ain't a fighter. Mama wants to save and preserve life. So there's a role for men because when you're talking about war and violence, see, that's a man's job. Because you can't, when you are at war, you can't feel mercy. You can't feel all these different things when somebody is trying to take your life. So, see, that's where that's where men step in. And when it comes to um, disciplining your church children, mama, because you kept this life inside of you for nine months, you you sort of soft on the child. Oh, baby, that's all. But see, daddy didn't carry that baby. He don't have that connection. Of course, daddy, many of y'all, fathers, you love your children, but you don't have that connection. So it's easier for daddy when daddy get home. Children know. Oh, they know daddy is different from mama. Now, some of y'all sisters, y'all can get rough, but nothing like a man. Because, see, a sister, y'all can get rough. But you still, you still will slack because that's my baby. And then, especially if that baby suckle off your breast. Another problem. You are not allowing your children to suckle off your breast. You are giving your babies to chemicals. Infamil. What's that other stuff? Infamil, Similac. And these chemicals are not forming proper brains. So you wonder why basically human beings are getting worse and worse. You can't think properly. You can recite information. Look, you can recite information, go to college and recite information, but you have problems applying and thinking in general because your brain is not developed because Similac and Infamil cannot give you, cannot develop your brain properly. And you wonder why your children turn against you because you gave them some chemicals. And you don't, and the children lack that connection to mama. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. You have failed your children, unlike the mother cat. The mother cat will fight against all odds and attempt to stand up and protect her babies. You're, you're not protecting your children. And you're not letting your children know and teach your children that which is dangerous. And I know you don't like this. But Caucasian people are dangerous. And our children, if you are a dark-skinned person, you they need to know the truth and the reality of living in a racist environment. All of us should be, uh, my topic will be uh, leaders. All of us are leaders. We are parents to children. We lead them in the family. The parents, the children rather, follow the parents. Leadership. Some of us are supervisors and uh principals of schools and captains and we you know in some type of shape fashion or form many of us sometimes whether we like it or not we have to assume the leadership uh, title or position i would like to uh send a shout out to my brother maurice muhammad a very sincere and very strong personality like myself. This brother gets my uh, full respect because I look at him as being very real. I probably will put in the description box a video <laughs> that he made about me a few years ago and at that time you see brother Maurice here 
speaking with me as a guest on this channel. But a few years ago, uh, Brother Maurice wasn't so cordial. <laughs> I want to talk about that real quick. There were two reasons of why <laughs> there were two reasons of why Brother Maurice had a problem with me those few years ago. Prior to that, prior to this issue, myself and Brother Maurice Muhammad, uh, he shared his uh, he shared my work with his family. We talked on the phone and all these, you know, very brotherly. However, as you know, uh, within the last few years, I have been I have become very critical, not hateful, not jealous, none of those things of our brother, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And uh, unless something changed. I still stand on the things that I say. That has not changed. However, back in those days, a few years ago, when I began to speak about Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam in general, that became an issue with Brother Muhammad, and he saw it as an attack against that which he loved. And I understand that. That, of course, wasn't my intent. Because, as you know, the reality is that's the place where I come from. And without that, this could not exist. What I call the reality's temple on earth. I want to make something perfectly clear about my critique of Minister Farrakhan. The way that I look at Minister Farrakhan. And I always give people their credit. Most of you know I will give you your credit where credit due. However, if you don't deserve the credit, if you're messing up, I got to I got to lay it down. I got to tell you the way it really is because this is the reality's temple. I'm not going to try to um, coddle anybody. I don't want to be coddled. If I'm messing up, you tell me that. If you think I'm a scam artist, if you think I'm a liar, whatever it is, I hope that you can prove these things. Let me know because I want to straighten myself up. I don't want to be a liar. I don't want to be a scam artist. I don't want to be those things. I want to be the best that I can be because I sincerely want to help change the condition of descendants of slaves born in America. We have lived in hell long enough. It is time now that, and we deserve the right to enter the promised land that Dr. King spoke of. But when it comes to Minister Louis Farrakhan, I do not degrade all his great accomplishments. However, I expect more from Brother Farrakhan because of where he is at, the level he's at. For an example, for those of you who follow basketball, I'm going to use Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was a rookie. He came into the league, fantastic dunks and all this fancy, magical things. The wonderful, incredible Michael Jordan. 55 points a game. But Michael Jordan was not winning a championship. It's cool, Michael, for you, personally for you, it's personally, personally for you, Minister Farrakhan, it's wonderful, the Million Man March, the Justice or Else, and all these different things that you have done, that's wonderful for you, but as a people, we continue to lose, so you had Michael Jordan in the game, 55 points, but there was no championship, the purpose of playing the game of basketball is to bring a championship to your city. You getting great scores and you winning some games, but you're not getting a championship. So I am speaking out of frustration and disappointment in regards to Brother Farrakhan because he has the ability not only to score big, but he can bring a championship, bring us to the promised land. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? But when Michael Jordan discovered and finally realized that he needed to play team ball and learn how to use his teammates, then Michael Jordan still was scoring 40, 50 points a game or whatever. But now he's bringing championships to the city of Chicago. We want to bring liberation. We want to bring freedom, justice, and equality to these who are descendants of slaves born in America. If you're not doing that, and if we have not done that, all these other things don't mean nothing because you still don't have a championship, and that championship is freedom, justice, and equality according to the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is this where my frustration lies. It has nothing to do with hate has nothing to do with jealousy. It's, I know that I'm looking at a person with the ability and the potential like Michael Jordan to bring us a championship to take us to the promised land. And unfortunately, my brother, Maurice Muhammad, didn't understand uh, where I was coming from, so he became very angry. And... Uh, it was sort of bad. Now, besides my critique of Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, Brother Muhammad also got very angry with me, and I don't know if he remembered, but I'm pretty sure he will remember. He was angry at me, at, at, at me. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to make this speech Shakespearean. <laughs> He was angry with me because I refused to say that I am some type of leader. And I told him, no, sir, I'm not a leader. The only thing I can do is bring a message. I'm not a savior. I'm not none of those different things. And he was very angry that I would not embrace the fact that indeed I am a leader. My problem, of which continues to this day, is that I am afraid of that position. There are those who want people to follow them. I'm the leader. They want the, the glitz and the glamour and all the people praising you and all this type of thing. Follow me, I'm the leader. The reason why I fear being a leader is because I have a fear of failure. I don't want to fail you. I want to be competent. I want to win for you. I want to bring that championship home so that we can celebrate. I want to take us to the promised land that Dr. King spoke of. And Sometimes you become afraid because you feel as though maybe you don't have the potential in order to do that because you have so many people looking at you, having faith and hope in you. And I don't want to fail you in those efforts. I don't want to fail myself. Can I do this? I really think I can. I have been put in leadership positions. In fact, um, being a manager, one of my first jobs was a manager at a fast food restaurant. I had no experience, but I got tired of just the minimum wage. So I made up a lot on an application saying that I had managerial experience, right? I said to myself, I can do it. I can do it. They hired me. I learned what they wanted me to do. I had no experience in leadership. I had no experience being a manager, supervising. But I done it, and I done it well. I done it well enough where they wanted me wanted me to to uh, train other supervisors and managers. And this is this is the problem. You have so many who want you to give you 
uh, they want you to give them their money, your money, and follow them and, and whatever. They have no, they have no purpose. They have no goal. They have no vision. They are not creative. Follow them to what? Follow them to where? I want to offer you purpose. I want to offer you goal. I want to show you that I'm creative in the struggle. I want to show you that I have a vision for a future that probably none of us will ever see. But we're going to, we're going to get it. We're going to begin to process and head it down to the next generation to bring it into fruition. The full promised land that Dr. King spoke of. And if that weight is put on somebody's shoulder, it's tremendous. Because I want to win. There are some of you who don't mind Michael Jordan just scoring. And they was perfectly happy that Chicago did not get a championship. But then there are those, hey, that's wonderful, Mike. You are the top scorer. You are the team captain. It's time for a championship ring. Like Beyonce say, put a ring on the finger. And that's what I want to do. I want to put a ring on your finger. Put a ring on it. And that's my fear. But if you put me in that position, I'm going to do the best I can. I truly believe I can take us to the promised land. Not bragging on myself, but due to learning the lessons from Brother Farrakhan and uh, Jesse Jackson and all our people who are alive today, plus Marcus Garvey and Malcolm and Honorable Elijah Muhammad and all our people learning the lessons from the past, bringing it, bringing it into today. We should be able to cross the River Jordan and do what our ancestors could not do. Peace forever and always and welcome to another edition of what I call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am your soul brother, number one, Angel Snow number seven. And uh, wow, it was sort of hot today. Um, I don't know how hot it was where you're at. News people, well actually the uh, weather forecasters, they basically are saying that we skip spring. We are experiencing summer already. I sort of like spring, but you know, I like my spring. Uh, I like summer too. I, I like, I, actually, I like hot weather. I do not really like the cold. Yeah, I, I don't like cold. All right, so what is it that we want to talk about? I want to say that is it is always an honor that you would allow me to come into your home. What would you say? I'm not in your home. You 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 lock the door. <laughs> Woo, man, y'all something else. I can talk. I can talk on the porch. <laughs> what would you say? Step a little. Go outside the fence. <laughs> man, y'all something else. You may not believe that, but that has actually happened to me. I knocked on doors, and and people, you you need to get off my, you know. Get away from a door, and I talked to him in the yard. They say you need to get out the yard, go outside <laughs> on the fence, <laughs> go go outside on the sidewalk, and you know I will holler at them ac across the yard. <laughs> Woo! I love us anyway. I do. I, I it, you know I don't take it personal. I, it's just fun to me. I, I like stuff like that. I don't take it personal. Now. What was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, check this out. As you know, I've said many times, I was locked up in the crazy house. <laughs> so, 
So he, here I am, a person, and uh, don't never think that I'm so, I believe I'm so smart, because there was nothing smart about getting locked up in the crazy house. It wasn't smart. But I will tell you this, I have learned many lessons. The problem when you make mistakes, the problem when you mess up, is when you don't learn nothing from your mistakes. Believe me. I have learned many lessons from everything that I have experienced. From my early childhood, during the time I worked with uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the time I was in the crazy house, and just working different jobs or whatever. Sometimes you have to mature. Sometimes you have to just grow. You know, because I will admit you know, back in the day, I really was a very silly type person. I wasn't wasn't thinking properly at all. And um, again, that's a bad thing. But when you learn from your mistakes, when you learn from experience, then you sort of got it going on. Unfortunately, you end up being 50, 60, 70 years old before you really learn something. That's why younger people need to listen to their elders so you don't have to make you don't have to make the mistakes that your elders done but y'all so silly and you know it all so you want to learn things the hard way well so be it now I do admit that I did listen to my elders and a lot of stuff I was able to avoid and I watch my elders that's why I don't have any children I do not want children I did not want that responsibility because I saw what my elders was going through. Did not want no part of it. Now, what I really want to talk about is, well, of course, this was another experience I had in the nut house. Sister Rashida Strober told me I need to write a book. I wrote, I wrote so much stuff when I was locked up. I'm just so tired of writing. I don't even want to read like I used to. I used to read a lot. I used to write a lot, but all that writing and reading I had to do to get myself out of that crazy house just, just wore me out, man. I'm telling you. It just, ugh. Just let me watch some TV or something. <laughs> watch a video. But, uh, look, one day, the news people, I don't know what, what, if, I don't know if it was a news, I don't know if it was a newspaper or one of the local news channels. I don't know exactly who, I don't remember. But they came to do a story on the people in the crazy house. Yay! So they came in and I said, wow! This is my opportunity to tell them about the dirt that these people do. The exploitation, the abuse, and the things of that nature, what these people do in this uh, facility. And of course, they knew, my tormentors knew that was, that was on my mind. And they did everything they could to keep the news people away from me. Which, which they didn't really need a whole lot of help. I'm going to tell you why. So the news people came in and started interviewing folks. And you know how it is on TV when something's going on? It seems as though... Especially in the soul community, it seems as though they the the the, uh, the news the news people. It seems as though they focus on the most dumbest, stupid acting Negro in the whole crowd. You know, there's a fire going on, and they interview the person. Yeah, man, I was man, me and my girl, man, we was doing the do right, and I start smelling fire. I thought, I thought it was me and her at first. <laughs> then I noticed people was gathered outside and it was this big fire. And I saw a dog, man. And the, the dog was doing what me and my baby was doing. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you know, dumb stuff. Smelling like liquor. So when they come into this facility and even some of the staff was like, y'all need to interview this guy. 
but they went, they looked at me and just like ignored because I guess I didn't look crazy enough for them. They found a, a, a Caucasian girl who was licking a lollipop. Well, how do you like being here? It's wonderful. I just love it. All about, I have great fun and everything is all right. I love my doctors. La, 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 la. They found somebody else retarded acting just like that. They purposely ignored me. They purposely ignored people they thought might have some sense. And I'll tell you why. Now you may not know this or not. I know this for a fact. The newspaper, Fox, CNBC, all these people, you think when they talk about Trump, you think when they talk about Hillary Clinton, neg negative thing, when you, when you hear them talk about these people in a negative manner, you really believe they don't like each other. All these suckers are interconnected. The news, if, if there was a, a, an alien invasion and the government knew that, pe that people was coming from Mars with a flying saucer, they would go to the to the new uh, to the news people if they discover what's going on, even if they don't, and tell them do not tell the public because we don't want the public, you know, to, to get all, you know, go into a panic. Not only that, it's many things that the government that that the uh, your news media knows. They will not report. There are many things they will not report. For an example, do you ever go to a store and you see those signs, no shirt, no shoes, no service? Who do you think that's for? That's not for us. That's for Caucasian, redneck, pink Hoosiers who are ghetto, who are ratchets that nobody wants to talk about, it's ignored. They are just as hoochie mama as any soul sister that's supposed to be a ratchet. They are just as thuggish as anybody else. But the news will not report it. Because they don't want to paint themselves bad. That's what it's about. If the news media, look, if the news media reported the news the way it really is, America, in the eyes of Americans and around the world, will really look, really look, really look like doo doo for real. They all work hand in hand. Many of these people went to school together. These these politicians, these news reporters, all of them went to the same universities and schools. A lot of them know each other. A lot of them intermarry with their families. It's all a game. It's all a setup. They put people in these. Uh, they develop. They they create these stereotypes. They put people in these positions. The media influence people's thinking. That's the reason why Donald Trump won. You think it was all negative. They are feeding their people, we need to get this man in here. You thinking that the, the, that the news folks, everybody's against Trump, when really they wasn't. Because you don't understand that all this stuff is interconnected. When you go to court, and of course, you might, you might, you might look very uh, lonely on your public defender, I got me a paid lawyer. Don't make no difference. They all interconnected with one another. They, the judge know your your paid lawyer. All these people know a lot of these people know each other. It's a game. So I don't I don't have to tell the news media 
that these people are exploiting folks. I don't have to tell. They already know. They already know. I don't have to go to the judge and tell her how these people are treating me in this facility. He already know. Matter of fact, one of those judges sort of, it sort of slipped. He made me think, he already, he already said something. He made a statement where he confirmed that he already know anyway. So what? What you going to do about it? So what is the game? So what we do on this dirt? What y'all going to do about it? That's, that's the bottom line. And you have Caucasian people that keep talking about, let's join together. And you no, know, you're not ready. You're not ready to go against your brother. Because these people could be your uncle, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister. And you're not going to go against these people. Let's unify and we can make things better. You're not going to do it. These Caucasian people know who the, who the races are. I had, um, I had, I had uh, Caucasian subscribers tell me they know. And I've had Caucasian subscribers tell me they agree with everything that I say, but they are scared to speak out because they know they know what will happen to them. President Kennedy, not because he loved black folks, but because America was looking real bad in the eyes of the world, he had to give a little concession and do a little little something. For the Negro.